Good afternoon, pilot teachers, and good afternoon, students. Thank you. Sit down. Okay, our lesson today will see us look at more construction of cross sections, and as well as looking at the construction of cross sections, we're also going to look at intervisibility, which is needed also in terms of when we are identifying or looking at cross sections, and I will explain that later on in the lesson. What I'd like us to actually check together and go through looking at now is the correction to the four activities that you were assigned for your homework. And those four activities involved drawing a cross section along the lines A to B for each of the four contour maps that were given. We're going to go through the steps for each of those different cross sections and we will look at the side view of each one of those and you also are required to do your corrections and after we look at the correction to that then we will move on to looking at the information on intervis intervisibility which is provided on the chart so correction first of all the activities were number one to construct a cross section along the line a to b so we look at contour map b you're referring to contour map b and you can double check on the cross sections that you have constructed in your exercise book Okay, if you look at the contour map as given, a secular contour pattern could be showing us a hill or a mountain. You were only expected to look at the point A from this particular height right across to point B. Following the steps of construction of a um, cross section, note the area that you're supposed to draw a con um, cross section of. Use a piece of paper Place the piece of paper along the line A to B. Mark the points A and B on your piece of paper. And then plot in every single feature or contour line that passes through along that particular piece of paper that you have from A to B. Once you have done that, include the heights on the piece of paper. And then construct or draw up the frame in your exercise book. Once you've drawn the frame in your exercise book, and show that you use a good vertical scale because if your vertical scale is not constructed properly then what might happen is that your cross section might look too steep or not very steep at all when it is supposed to show that feature in reality so the vertical scale is important after you've constructed the vertical scale you then plot the information from your piece of paper onto the frame making sure that the distance or the horizontal length must be exactly from point A to point B. Keep the point A along where the vertical scale is and you simply move your piece of paper up and down according to the different heights that crosses your piece of paper against the frame that you've constructed. Use dots to show the different points or features and once you have plotted all of those different features that appear on your piece of paper onto the frame, you connect the dots to give a cross section of the feature. Okay, so we look at from point A to point B, if you followed the steps, all those heights are actually labeled or plotted accurately on the piece of paper. Onto your frame, we now start plotting. The first dot goes to where 80 meters is, you double check. And the 80 meters should be right where the vertical axis is. Check the next height. We move to 100 meters, another dot would be placed where 100 meters is according to the vertical height. The next point should be 120, you check. And then you go to the highest point of that feature, that's contour pattern C, uh, sorry B, and that is 140, that's the highest point. But there are two times that that line passes through 140, so you should have 140 here and you should also have another. 140. Okay, then we come back down to 120. Then you come to 100 meters, that is. And finally, you come to where B is. You check the points, make sure your points are plotted accurately. And once you use freehand to connect the dots, this is what the feature should look like. You check and make corrections. Okay, that's not all. Ensure that your cross section has a title. Ensure that the vertical axis is actually labeled. And ensure that you have a label for the horizontal axis. 
If you have all of those, you can give yourself a tick. If you have missed out on the title, the labeling of the access, then include those also. Okay, everyone, note this is what your feature, your cross-section should look like. Okay, good. We move on to the next one. This time, contour pattern C. We're looking at the feature from point A to point B. Piece of paper, A to B. Heights and features labeled on your piece of paper. Plotting, after we've constructed the um, framework, 140. A should be right where 140 is. You double check. The next point will be also 140. You check. The next dot will come down now to 120. Then you have a long distance before you come to 120 again. And finally, you will come to B, which is also at 120. Once you've done that, you connect the dots. This is what your feature should look like. You check. We start from here, and then a drop right to point B. Okay. Again, you check title of your graph. It's important, labeling of the axis. If you have not included the labeling, ensure that the labeling is done. Okay, we move on to the next one. This time E, the contour pattern E. Okay, looking at that feature, the contour pattern E from A to B. If we follow the steps, our piece of paper, plot in all the features that passes through or that crosses that point A to B, label, put in the heights of those features, and then onto the framework. We start plotting. Point A should be right where 60 meters is along the vertical axis. Point, uh, the next point, sorry, should be 80 meters. We check the next point, 100 meters. And then you also have another 100 meters. So there are two points which the line goes through the 100 meters. So you should have 100 meters and then 100 meters again. Then you come down to 80 meters, down to 60 meters, and then another 60 meters again. Then you go up again to 80 meters, another 80 meters, and finally you should come to B, which should sit at 60 meters. Okay, you connect the dots, you check, this is what your cross section should look like. Don't forget the title, access to be labeled. Okay, we move on to the last one. Okay, the last one then. The contour patterns as shown, we are going from A, point A, to point B. Note now that the contour A, or sorry, not the contour A, but the point A does not sit exactly on the contour lines. So our plotting will have to be accurately placed on what fig, um, value point A is going to be and what value point B will have to be. So we'll check. We've done step one, placing the piece of paper across point A to B, plotting in all the features that come across from point A to point B. And once we've got the uh, features plotted on our piece of paper, now onto the graph. Okay, if you look at the information here, point A is not on 60, it is not on 80. Rather, it is between 60 and 80. Okay, check where point A is. Okay, we move on. The next height will be 80 meters. The next height at 100 meters. The next height, 120 meters. The highest point then, 140 meters. And then we go for a long distance there before we come to 140 meters again. You come down to 120 meters, 100 meters. Then you come down to 80 meters. And then finally, you come to B, which should be 
between 70 and 80 meters. Okay, we connect the dots using prehand, and this is what your feature should look like. Okay, so what you have actually been doing is practicing on construction of cross sections. Does anyone have any questions with regards to the um, construction of cross sections? Any questions? None? Okay, we move on. You remember the activity or exercise that was given? Okay, we're going to look at that particular activity or exercise. Um, for the benefit of the other students, I'll give you only five minutes to double check to ensure that that cross section is actually constructed and done. So draw a cross section now along the line or relief X, Y. For the benefit of those students who have not done this, I'm giving you five minutes to actually do your construction. For those who have done that, then you can double check and you can go back. Check to see that your labels are done, uh, labeled. Sorry, the X's are labeled and you have a title for that particular graph. Okay. And for the meantime, anyone who has any queries or problems with regards to construction of cross sections, I can come around and check or help if you need any explanation.
Dan itu bukan hanya orang yang And can you see that this, all of this is a way of saying, all of this is a way of saying. So that's why I mentioned that a vertical state is very important by we are saying firstly before you come into your vertical state. Okay, since we are starting with the height at about 800 meters, there's really no need, no need for you to start from zero and come up all the way there. You could have just started from 800, but don't put this point here as zero. 800, 820, 840, so you know the interval is going up by 20 meters, but you started here at 800. And in the field, it's going to start at 800. So for the time being, you can leave it as it is. You don't have to really, at the next time, you need to think about that for next time. tend to think that this point is always be zero, that means that and you have done the right thing. You can start at 620 and you are going at 920, but don't put this as zero and just leave it here as the interval is going to be zero. you will keep on saying for me there is no need for you to go down the road will be fine with you all you are going to do is just like say for example if the first person does something and the third one is just doing all you have to do is put an arrow to indicate that this is where the because you cannot do that if the if you say it will be wrong for someone to just come down there to give you some arrow so an arrow will only indicate that later
feet and stuff like that, but it's it's me. Okay, we can stop at 7.26 or we can stop at 7.00, that's fine. So in, in other words, you have to do all of them individually, you cannot do them together, unless you are close to me as my colleague. I can tell you from my point to point here whether this is too far down there or not. Then you can do that and do that comparison across the board. But otherwise, usually you won't do that if you're not too far. Okay, when you are putting in people, when you are putting in the people, you are not supposed to draw them in like this. You just throw the people on those particular places and leave them bare full stop. You know why? Because this is not your training space. So you cannot draw the students there. You have to just throw with them arrow to indicate where they will come in and what will happen. But for now, since I did not mention that, I'll accept that. Okay? What did we, we saw? Yes, but remember, it does not start from this point here and come to that point there. It only starts from the middle point to that middle point. Can you see the difference? If we started from the bottom all the way up, that's when we are going to see that. Can you see that? So the cross section is only according to which point that you've been asked to construct the cross section of. But that's a good point. When you look at that, you are thinking of, you are thinking of this, right? something like that. But that's because we didn't start from the end and go to that end to have included all those low, high to the top, high, and then come back down, low, 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 right down there. We just started from here to there. Okay, okay we'll check on what you should have got for that particular feature, how it should look like on a cross section. We're going from X to Y. You put a p piece of paper along the point X to Y and then plot in all those features plus the contours that actually crosses your piece of paper from X to Y. This is what you should do or what the information should look like. Onto the framework. Okay, here is um, what or where a lot of students have actually made a mistake or not a mistake, but you will find that for those students who decided that they will start at zero meters and go all the way up to 940. The feature when you construct will only occupy space from about 700 and upwards. Huh? So that means all the other space you have from 700 to zero is going to be wasted. So it is not necessary for you to start at zero meters. You check the lowest height. And the lowest height here would be about 720 meters. So that means where you start, you can start at 700 meters. 720, 740, 760, 780, as long as you do not put where 720 is and then one line down, as long as you don't put zero. Because if you put the zero there, then already your vertical scale is wrong. You leave it blank because the blank will tell us that if we know the interval, then we will know the next point if we are going down will be 680, if we start at 700. So don't put zero there. And there is no need for you to start at zero. The lowest point is 720. You can start off at 720 or 700 meters. OK, if you plotted all the information onto the graph which you would have constructed, then the feature constructed would look like this. From here up to the point, and then down up again to this point. So you check the features that you have. This is what it should look like. Some of you decided to go ahead to putting in the features that you were asked to put in, like say, for example, the hat, where it comes in on the cross section. And there are some students who decided to draw that small hat there, or that small house. Note that when you are asked to plot in a feature on a cross section, all you need to actually put on your cross section is an arrow to indicate exactly 
where the feature comes in. You don't need to draw the man, you don't need to draw the tree, you don't need to draw the road or the hut or the river. All you need to put in on the cross section is an arrow to indicate exactly where on the cross section the feature comes in. Okay, you check, this is what you're supposed to have. Okay, we'll move on, and I'm going to give you some more work, perhaps, for those who are not very confident with the construction of the cross-section for your homework. But let's move on now to the next part that I'd like to also look at, and that is on intervisibility. When you look at the four const um, constructions plus the last one that we just did now, you note that at one point or another, you might be asked questions like, if you stood at the peak of this particular point, are you able to see to the other point? Like say, for example, if it is point A to B, if you stood at A, will you be able to see B? If you stood at B, will you be able to see A? And if we are asking you questions of such, then what we are moving on to now is what we call intervisibility. I'll explain first of all what intervisibility is all about, and then we'll come to looking at the information from the diagram. When we talk about intervisibility, it is simply when one feature can be seen from another feature and vice versa. So if it is A to B, A is a feature, B is a feature. If A can be seen from B and vice versa, then those two features, A and B, are intervisible. So in the case of this example, a to B, B to A is actually intervisible. You can see point A from B and point from A. It is, it is not always possible, it is not always possible to tell from a map, like a contour map that is, whether two places or two points are intervisible. The reason being that, there might be tall buildings or trees or other features which may rise above what we call the line of sight between those two features. Therefore, a contour section or cross section that is drawn along the line joining the two features usually shows whether the features are intervisible or not. So by just looking at the map, say for example, if we go back all the way to this particular contour map that you had, and if I ask you, is X visible from Y? Maybe just looking at that might not be enough because we don't know whether there are tall buildings that are also found or trees that are also found along the point X to Y. So therefore, if we construct a cross-section, we will be able or we should be able to note. So if you were at X, is X visible from Y? The answer is simply no, because there is a peak here and there is another peak out there. There are two or maybe one rule that we need to make note of, and that is... When the slope between two features is a convex slope, we all know what a convex slope is, a slope that goes out. The two features are usually not intervisible. Example, the black diagram here shows the slope that goes out. The red line that I have drawn here is the line of sight. And if you stood at A, and you try to check someone down maybe at B, it will be impossible to see them because of the landform here. And similarly, if you stood at B, it will be impossible to see someone at A. So when the slope between two features is convex, the two features are usually not intervisible. When the slope is con concave, a slope that goes in, the two features are usually intervisible. So if I stood at X, I will be able to see 
what's at y or someone at y and vice versa. So that's a point or a rule to remember. Note, two features, two features are intervisible if there are no points higher than the line of sight of the two features. Say, for example, if I am standing there, here, and you are standing out there, there are no high points between where you are and where I am. Therefore, the two features are intervisible. Similarly, A to B. There are no high points in between. Therefore, from A to B, you are intervisible. So when we come to the information on the diagram, you can see there the diagram on the top. B can be seen from A. The points A and B are said to be intervisible. The line of sight is the broken line that is actually drawn. Note also, in the diagram here, the true summit of a hill cannot be seen by the observer at the base of the hill because the slope obstructs the view so that only a false summit can be seen for the case of this example here. There are two summits, the true summit here and the false summit here. So if someone stood at the top of the true summit, they may not be able to see an observer at the bottom and vice versa because of the false summit here that might block the view. So here we say that this point is not intervisible from this point or this point is not intervisible from that point. So when we talk about intervisibility, it is simply when one feature can be seen from another feature and vice versa. And it is easier to note when you construct a cross section, it will be easier for you to be able to identify whether the points are intervisible or not. Okay, let me give you your homework to conclude. You remember the four constructions that we did? The four cross section? Okay, you are going to decide by simply writing down whether the points A to B for each of those, those cross sections are intervisible or not intervisible. So all you have to do is for each of the cross sections, you write beside each one whether the points A to B are intervisible or not. And the cross sections are what you have constructed in, the, in your exercise book. And that is what we have corrected at the beginning of our lesson. So those points are B, you check. Is point A intervisible from point B? Look at the next cross section you've constructed. Is A visible from C? Oh, sorry, is A visible from B? The next one, E cross-section that is, is A visible from B? And finally, the last one is A visible from B. So all you are deciding is whether A is visible from B or not, according to those four cross-sections that you've constructed. And that is going to be your homework for today. OK, class, that is also. Oh, we have also come to the end of the lesson now. If you can stand up. Okay, to the pilot teachers, our keyword for today is cross-section for lesson 16. Good afternoon and thank you, students.